we would give each other shit, you know, play, we like, we, I think one night we sat around, uh, playing YouTube videos and, um, like I played a trailer for like Matt Steele, which was like a role that I all did oh, for yeah. the thin guy. And he was like, are you kidding me? And I was like, Oh dude, I remember Matt Steele. I remember like, being like, who got it? Who's the guy that got it? Oh, this guy got it. What? You know. Hey, how, how's I know I can't see you, Will, but how's everything going? Everything's good. I'm sorry about that again, by the way. Had some technical difficulties, but everything's good. Yeah, I'm here in LA working on a project right now. And so just uh, running around doing things. There you go. Any anything you, you can mention or kind of top secret stuff? Yeah. No, it's not top secret. It's a cool film called Samson. Uh, Rooster is the writer and director. Um, and it's a film about these two guys that kidnap best friend and the girlfriend. So the best friend can win the girlfriend back by being a hero. And things kind of go wrong and ends up being a pretty crazy situation. But it's fun. It's like a uh, sort of a dark comedy it's kind of reminiscent of this <laughs> you're just involved in movies where there's girlfriends being stolen away <laughs> you know i'm just i'm just the i'm the i'm i'm the girlfriend assist guy you know yeah apparently i'm like my, my thought was like i don't know if you ever watched dawson's creek but you're you kind of pacied cole in this movie you know he was like dawson and joey <laughs> and you you right. like you end up with her you know the unforeseen kind of swoop in yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Still Your Girl guy, you know? Yeah. You know, another thing that kind of stood out at some point, I don't know, I, I know you worked with uh, Kevin Costner on a movie, but I'm like, you kind of looked like him in this movie, like a young version of Kevin Costner. It was, uh, especially certain scenes, I think the diner scene, I'm like, wow, there's like a resemblance there. I don't know if it was your facials or your look, something about it. I'm like, you kind of remind me of Kevin Costner in that. Wow, I'm gonna have to tell Kevin that's a pretty good compliment there. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you were you were one of, you were going against him as a weeby boy, I think, right? And let him go. It was the weebies. I, I think that's what it was. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. So, hey, nice good parallel. memory. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do have good memory because, in fact, like I remember meeting you in Chicago when you were promoting Everybody Wants Some. So it was you. Oh, like, okay. Okay. Yeah, Tyler, man. God. Yeah, we met in a hotel room. I was like, I had finals that day and I was running like late with a, I came with a backpack. You know? Oh man, dude. Well, that, I hope it went okay. We had a lot of fun on that press tour, probably too much. Oh, it was such a great press tour. I remember, you offered me some tea, actually. So uh, <laughs> I remember that aspect, too. So thanks for that, too. A college. Hey, video, man. On the loose. If I've got tea, I'm happy to share, you know? <laughs> I'm curious. Do you still talk to those guys? Or are you guys still keep in touch? Because it's like it's amazing how everyone's uh, career kind of blew up. I mean, Tyler's, uh, you know, Superman, Zoe Deutsch. Right. Doing Glenn Powell's, like, in Top Gun. Everyone's doing major things. You know, yourself in so many different projects. We absolutely stay in touch. I hit up half of those guys the second I landed in town in Los Angeles just to let them know, hey, I'm here. If you're free. We're absolutely still in touch. If we we all fall into sync with each other again, it would be like it would be like eight years ago never happened, you know? It's unbelievable that yeah, that was like on screen. You could even tell how you guys bonded and and you know everyone seemed to be kind of coming up at the same time. And now looking back at it, you know, years later, it's like it's also cool to see how everyone's you know evolved in their career too. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. I I mean, we all feel like the same people, but uh, you know, then you go to the movies and you see Glenn and Top Gun, and you're like, "There's Glenn. Look at that," you know. <laughs> Yep, and you guys just played some uh, wild college kids, you know, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, that was a good time. That was a fun movie. You know, how was it working with, with uh, you know, you, you got a pretty good crew here, too. I mean, working, I spoke to Amy, I think, uh, a few months yeah. back ago, too. So she's she's a joy to be with, you know, uh, to talk to, I'm sure, and work with. And then Ben, oh, how, yeah. how was it working with them? Because that's another kind of good crowd I mean, there, too. Yeah. Yeah, it was effortless. You know, I mean, that's the best compliment I could get. It was just effortless. Just fell into line with each other immediately and clicked in. And uh, 
yeah, you know, easy, easy, easy to work with. Great actors and good friends now. So it's pretty, pretty like, ideal situation. No doubt about it. You know, it's always cool to kind of work with, with people who not only are talented, but also you kind of know, I'm sure too, around town, just like through the years. Cause you guys got to came up once again in the same sort of generation of actors, you know? Oh yeah. I've been seeing Ben Winchell in audition rooms for years, you know? <laughs> like it's like who's this ben winchell guy that i'm constantly having to go up against the role jesus good looking asshole look at this guy uh but he's he, he's just the best he's 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 one of my closest friends now and that's always like you know what you like hope might happen going into a movie but it doesn't always happen you know right yeah you just don't know sometimes the chemistry's right or how you click and get along but especially seeing someone like that you know like you you're in competition mode or you know or you just kind of finally bond that you guys finally made it together onto a movie you know it's a unique <laughs> totally 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 yeah i gave him uh we would give each other shit you know play we like we i think one night we sat around uh playing youtube videos and um like i played a trailer for like matt Steele, which was like a role that i auditioned oh, yeah. for the thin guy and he was like are you kidding me and i was like oh dude i remember max Steele. i remember like being like who got it who's the guy that got it oh this guy got it what you know so it was fun oh was that a role you might have been up for or, or, or knew about uh, during the time I remember auditioning for Max Steel. I don't think I was like in in the mix, but I remember auditioning for it. And you know, I remember it being one of the first things I went in for in L.A. Wow. And and you know, it's one of those movies where it didn't end up being the biggest hit, but Ben was great in it. And it's one of those movies where you're like, wow, this could be like a big hit, like da da da. You know, who got this? Oh, this guy got it. Okay, you know, it's one of those things. It's crazy how in this industry things come full circle, right? It's unbelievable, you know, especially starting out. Oh, yeah. Out. Right. That's why you got to, you know, be a gentleman and not be an asshole. If you're an asshole, you get found out pretty quick, you know? Yeah, because you end up at some point probably working with these people. You know what I mean? If, if your career yep. is where it's supposed to be or, you know, the length of it is successful and you get the, 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 the actually the ability and privilege to work, you know, you're going to come across them. Either you're going to be cast with them or, or some kind of connection is going to be there. Totally. Totally. Yeah, totally. I like how you took on the the country boy in this role. I mean, was this was this part of some uh, like your U Louisiana upbringing a little bit too? Because I'm like, well, it's yeah, well, it, it wasn't too much of a stretch. I read the script and met with Joe and told him I wanted to read for Jack and explained why. And uh -huh. you know, I mean, for for me, it was pretty cool to like be on a tractor again. As like goofy as that sounds, because I grew up sort of not on like an agricultural farm, but like on a bigger piece of land in in rural Texas and, you know, operating a tractor was sort of part of like day to day life. Um, so then it's like, Oh, I have a role where I have to drive a tractor. That's fun. I haven't done that since I was in high school. Yeah. Let's do it. And w what a change of pace from LA too. Right. Imagine that. Oh like yeah. Oh yeah. Maryland is just like, gorgeous and you know we were shooting the pandemic which was tough because of the fear of like production being shut down or like worse like someone getting like seriously ill you know and um so there was that stress but aside from that it was like paradise we were like at this like camp like a like a i don't know like people go there for like retreats and like boy scout camps or something i don't know it's like just a bunch of cabins and stuff on the edge of the um uh, what's the big one? Uh, Chesapeake Bay. And, um, you know, you're just like there in rural Maryland where like the woods look like they're 400 years old because they are. And you're just doing a movie. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's something different about actually being on location, like authenticity of it versus like a set or, you know, like actually being at a location where, where the story kind of is a character in a sort, you know, like this town revolves around these characters, literally. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, if you were had to go out, like, man, if you had to go straight from L.A. and just show up on day one and start shooting that movie, it'd be like, I don't know, I feel like it'd be almost impossible to capture the rhythm that living in a place like that gives you, you know? Like, luckily, we went out, like, a week ahead of time and have rehearsals, and we're able to sort of, 
you sort of settle into like a slower rhythm of life out there, which which worked for the movie. It's like it's kind of what you need to do, you know? Yeah, no, that's what it is. It's it's a whole different kind of lifestyle, not in a sense too. Like you, you can see even through a characters that you know everyone kind of gets married young, and you know you're like the character Cole is like a you know a, a alien basically leaving town and stuff. But everyone's got a predetermined almost future, you know, in a town like that, and uh, you kind of hunker up with people who you know or grew up with. You know, it's a whole different lifestyle than like the big city life too. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Completely different. You know, you know and I had some like, uh, I was just going to say, I had some like understanding of that growing, I grew up in a small town, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I got married at 24, which in LA is like young and in Northeast Texas, it's like old. So, you know, it's just a different perspective on sort of the order of living in a smaller town. Yeah, no question. So you, you kind of know, you know, by just by being raised and growing up, you know, what, what it's like usually culturally even there uh, in in that respect to it, you know. So that's, that's, a, that's a neat perspective to kind of have because – and the cool thing, you mentioned you had rehearsals. Like that's rare kind of on film to do rehearsals. So did you – I mean, you mentioned it helped you guys a lot, but you don't see that too often, right, having like a time to rehearse prior to shoot. Yeah, it's a weird thing, right? Because you're always like, it's like you're afraid to rehearse because you're like, ah, what if magic happens in the moment, the first mm -hmm. time we say it and we don't capture it on camera? But then you're like, yeah, man, but you're an actor. That's your job. You know, I mean, I've done plays where I had to do a hundred, I had to do the play 120 times. You know, it's like, it's your job to do it more than once. And like Richard Linklater understood that with everybody wants them. We rehearsed for two weeks before we put that on its feet. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I think like coming from a theater background and like having worked with Rick on everybody wants some, you sort of get like, I sort of had a perspective of like, this is what, if you have the opportunity, this is what you do to like make it the best that it can be, you know? Yeah. No, exactly. I think it's 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 a unique thing, but you got to be as an actor. You're right. You got to be prepared for anything. You know, once you get comfortable about doing something one way, then you're you're probably not in the game fully. Your head's not in the game. You know, you got to be ready for anything, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you never know what's going to happen on the day when you start filming it too. You start adding all the different elements of camera and light and sound and everything, and everything changes at once. So I can you might as well imagine. rehearse it. Yeah. Any plans for you during the summertime? I mean, I know you're, you're, you're working a bit, which is always good, you know, to, to have a gig. But uh, any, like, short little getaway maybe or things you like to do if you get some time off? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, my wife and I just had a, a baby last year, so we got a 13-month-old now. So traveling is a little bit more of a challenge. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if we can sneak something in at the end of summer. I need to plan a trip, Jim. I need to take my girl out on a date, you know? I need there to you go. Weekend. Yeah. Can't lose that. To... Can't lose that once <laughs> no. you're married. You know, you got to no, keep it up. No, no, no. We got to go do something. We got to do something. Yeah, we'll figure it out. How is it now? You mentioned the 13 month old. How is it now being a dad? Has your life actually changed like they say they do? I don't have a kid, but I, I've heard through my friends it's like it like immediately sort of changes the perspective on on you and your life. Uh, what has that been like now reflecting kind of a year after the fact? Uh, you know, it's like it's like the biggest blessing ever, without a doubt, because you've got this like uh, new little soul that you're in charge of making sure that they don't die and uh you know are able to get to know every day on a day-to-day -day basis so it's like incredible but then like also like you don't have a life anymore so there's that aspect mm -hmm. so you know it's like it you know you you got to kind of buckle down a little bit things are a little bit harder that's okay it's sort of part of the bargain right I, I can imagine. And there's no guide map for that, right? No matter what everyone tells you, a device, like when you're in a moment, I'm sure it's whole, all that goes out the window. Oh, yeah. Everyone's got ideas and they've got a thing where they tell you and everyone's got their little trick. It doesn't matter. It's all a bunch of bull crap. You still have to figure it out for yourself anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know, like I feel like that that's the cool thing about like having, you know, with some, I'm obviously not being a single parent. 
you know, being lucky enough to, to have a partner there by your side. You guys are, I'm sure, growing together at it too, you know, as you're experiencing this. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. it's pretty cool. That's cool. Hopefully I'll get that one day. But first I need to find someone I can last with for more than like two days, you know? So Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you maybe need to move to Maryland, slow down a little bit. Get you, get you, yeah. nice, get you a nice Maryland girl, you know? <laughs> I've seen it in this movie, but it seems more simpler than, than in the big cities where it's just like endless crazy stories of dating, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Any any movies you've seen? I know you mentioned we, we talked about Glenn and Top Gun. Anything you've seen lately, either in theaters or, or at home that you really liked or, or show you're maybe binging on? I mean, I thought Top Gun was freaking like ridiculously good. Just sort wow. of like, no offense to Marvel movies. I like them. I think they're great. But like you watch a movie like Top Gun and you're like, this is so much better than all this CGI crap that I'm used to watching. Like, what the heck? Like more movies like this, please. Um, but you know what else? I just got done watching this Hulu show, The Bear. Um, have you yeah, seen this show? Chi- yes, it takes place in Chicago and I'm currently in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. So it's a very close to, to my heart sort of movie. And like the beef, the Italian beef sandwich is like a major thing around here. I don't know if you've ever tried it. It's a great Dude, show. I haven't had an Italian beef sandwich. I want one now. How did they do with like capturing the Chicago vibe? Do you think they pulled it off? I think they did a really good job at it. I mean, they film it here. So it's a very authentic kind of feel to it too. So they film it in, in town, but Man, I just had like Italian beef is a way of life here. Kind of people talk about Chicago pizza, deep dish and all, but like if you're a true Chicagoan, the beef is like the thing to go. I just had one last night actually. So, um, it, God, it, I got to get a Chicago beef next time I'm in town. This is like, it's like top priority for me now. Yeah, Al's beef or Pertillo's, as you heard, Pertillo's is a popular spot here. They have good beef. So, uh, okay, got to okay. try it. But yeah, so you're liking the show, huh? Yeah, I just finished it. You know, I thought it was like, I thought it was a really, really solid show. Just great acting, great writing. It's like, it was just nice. It's like, I don't know. It's sort of like, felt like The Office to me, but like a little bit more like of a drama than a comedy. But like one of those shows that's like just sort of day in the live show where it's like, yeah, I could watch this for like 10 seasons and be like totally down to just watch these guys make like, really good looking food and like argue with each other you know like sounds just like really oddly like a relaxing show even though everyone's screaming the entire time and i've worked in kitchens so i think if you've worked in a kitchen you're like yeah that's pretty much the way it is you know Uh you see that's what we're getting here too even a movie like galena too you know it's just like it's that slice of life well you just like people are attracted to watching something that's like very authentic and and a slice of everyday life you know i think that's like kind of sometimes the best stuff to watch is sort of really is relate to like that you know it really is yeah i don't know if you've read uh stephen king's book on writing but um he talks about writing and it's all man it's an awesome book even if you i mean you're a writer you don't you don't need help with that but like it's like oh i do i'm a horrible writer i just write funny (laughs) content but i still can't put (laughs) it (laughs) well you know it's it's an interesting thing because he talks about like your best stories are going to be like obviously what you know and like if you're in doubt just like write about your job and like Mm -hmm. you would be surprised how interesting people find just learning about someone else's job even if it's like the most mundane thing you know if you're i don't know whatever postal worker delivery guy or personal trainer or whatever it is like just you know and like i i feel like that's pretty um that shows like a good representation of that i mean we all like can relate to food but like you know i'm watching it with my wife and she's never worked in a kitchen and i have she's like this is not like what it's like actually like. And I'm like, Oh no, that's like actually what it's like. People like screaming at each other and throwing things. It's pretty crazy. You know? So it's fun. That's cool, man. I'm glad I got to catch up with you. This is cool. Years later, but you know, I uh, know, man, this is great. Yeah. Still watching your stuff. You're doing awesome. Uh, Keep up the interesting work. I love how you go from purge to this, you know, and then all (laughs) the stuff in between. It just, uh, you really have a knack at at doing cool characters and just like 
doing being out there you know literally uh and doing different sort of genres so uh, keep on and keep on doing the good work and and hope to connect you on on the next one that that you're working on now thanks jim man i'm looking forward to it let's try to not make it another eight years huh <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right for sure I'll, I'll try i'll try to get something interesting for you stay in touch man hey you too will thanks so much for taking the time really appreciate it hey appreciate you have a great day you too